Hello folks, I'm David Toll, we're bringing you today's show, thank you for watching. Today we're going to be hunting in uh, Heflin, Alabama, we're going to be quail hunting. We're right in the middle, Heflin, Alabama is right in the middle of Atlanta and Birmingham, and we're going to be hunting on a place called Sweet Time Hunting Preserve. Uh, we've got a real special treat for you today, we're hunting with Red Farmer, NASCAR driving great, and we're hunting with a sidekick of his, Mark Brenner, of an ARCA car driver. We're gonna have a great time. Keith has got some really good dogs that we're gonna show you. And uh, it's just gonna be a great hunt. So sit tight and we're gonna go bird hunting. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Hey, gentlemen. Hey, Keith. How y'all today? Fine. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Keith, hey, I brought you some you. guests. Hey. How you doing? Mark, Mark Brenner. Brenner. Well, nice to meet you. Red Mark. Farmer. Hey, nice to meet you, Red Farmer. Thanks. Heard about you for years now. I'm glad to have you out here. Well, I hope we get some birds. I believe mm -hmm. we will this afternoon. The weather looks good. So yeah. Looking forward to it. Overcast enough for the dogs to be able to smell in this green right here at the end of the season. It gets tougher, but mm -hmm. overcast helps. Tell us. Ground. Tell us a little bit about your hunt. Well, we've got about 1,200 acres here on the preserve. It's all bordered along the Tallapoosa River. Um, I've raised and trained bird dogs all my life, and uh, got a nice string of pointers here, and uh, raised four or five litters a year. Uh, field trial with some of them, uh, and but the hunting preserve business has pretty well kept me here on the weekend, so I don't get away and do much field trialing as, as I would like to. But uh, about how many birds a year do you kill? Uh, we went through about 15,000 here this year on the preserve. I've been, this is my fourth season here, and we've grown in increments of three or 4,000 each year, so it's gone along good. I, I hear you have some pretty special dogs. I got some I think is special. Uh, everybody has their own good old blue in their memory there, but I've got half a dozen down here that earns their keep pretty regular. Well, before we go out on a hunt, you want to show us your kennels and show sure. us your dogs? Yeah, y'all come on down here. Well, let's and I'll go show look you at it. Y'all go ahead. This dog is uh, Huck, champion Sweet Time Huck is his whole title. He's a two-time national shoot to retrieve champion and uh, I got to do some commercials for Remington with him back about five years ago and uh, just really, my wife and I went up to Maryland to Remington Farms and they whined and dined us and really made my wife appreciate my dogs a whole lot more in the process. And uh, he, now he's the daddy and granddaddy of most everything I raise here. And he's been quite a dog. He's, he's nine now. Yeah. 
I bred him to that little orange female there eight times, and I've kept a male puppy out of each one of those litters, and that's the bulk of my stock, and we'll, that's what we're going to take today is uh, some of their pups. They range every six months. I've got another batch. Get up on the table, boys. Get up there, Just. Get back up there. Get up there, Stoney. Good boys. Good boys. Good boys. Settle down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down, Just. See it, Stoney. Good boys. Good boys. There, Jake, the big one on the end, is four, and they're six month increments right on down. And I've enjoyed having these uh, hook. Sit down. <laughs> the coo. Sit down. Sit down. You quit acting silly. Sit down. Big shot. Sit down. Sit. Come on down here and sit down. Sit. Good boy. They're in six month increments right down to cool. The one, the big fella in the middle is eight months old. And he's going to outgrow most of his wow. older brothers there. He's, for some reason, got to jump on them. <sighs> but I really believe that focus and getting some attention, making them, having them make some eye contact with you and that kind of thing is a big start in the training. And then you, you get that part down and you get in the field, the rest of it falls into place a lot easier. Whoa, stay up there. They sure do seem to be very well disciplined. <laughs> a little bit at a time and they're tough, tough. Uh, uh, they're a big part of their training is just focus and uh, I always put I work dogs for other people and uh, really before I do a lot in the field with them I'll start them here around the yard and get some yard training and some manners down and then when you get in the field the rest of it's a lot easier you don't have to chase them and holler at them quite so much Jake come here I hear that a lot. <laughs> they got to start them young. <laughs> Just, come here. Come here, Just. Good boy. Good boy. Get back up there. Come here, Hook. Come here, Hook. Good boy. Good boy. Get back up there. Stony. Good boy. All right. Get back up on the table. Get up there. Coo, come here, Coo. Come here, Coo. Come on, come on, Coo. He's still the the baby in the bunch and unsure about what I want him to do. He wants to, but big shot. Come here, big shot. Big shot. You're not big shot. Get back up there. Big shot. Come here. Big shot. Come here. Big shot. Here. Come here. <laughs> big shot. Big shot. Good boy. Big shot. You get back up on that table. Get back up there. Big shot here. Good boy. Get back up there. He knew what he was doing. He was quite ready to jump. Yes, sir. He just on the, right on the edge. They're all really little athletes. If they were human, there, I'm sure several of them would be professional ball players or something. <laughs> they can really go. And What's fun to me is that they do have that athletic drive and, and the fire to just take them on out of the county. But yet I've got a handle on them, and they'll yeah. focus on me and listen, and it's, it's fun dogs. And I haven't haven't beat it into them by any means. It's just yeah. been repetition, and yeah. they all love me, and just kind of a matter of being consistent and a little firm hand, like a like a good daddy ought to beat his children yeah. more or less. Yeah. All right. Keith, how many of these dogs are we gonna hunt with today? We'll take uh, four or five of them down there with us, and uh, run them in pairs, and then as we find wind up, I may put down four or five just to see a string of them pointing and backing. Well, <laughs> you got a 
shot and that was wrong. Just fish. Good boy. Here. Just here. Good boy. Whoa. This is something that I don't typically train my dogs to do on their own, but I'll let them do it for safety's sake. I'll let Just come in. Just. Oh, Just. All right. All right, Just. All right, Just. You will, man. That kind of gets him out of harm's way. Now move on in, Mr. Farmer. Might just watch a little bit, but kind of come on in with me. I'll let Red pull up a little further. Here, pick up this other one out. We saw it the first cut. They're going this way. The wind. You got one. Shoot, Red. Yeah, it's like you. In the cane. Oh, not not quite, but I bet he went to it. Yep. He's watch it, watch it. Hey! Promise. We're sitting here. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Boy! Whoop, whoop! And, uh... Whoop, come around, come around! <laughs> the dogs are really good. About how long y'all had this place? This was my fifth season here. Um, this was my wife's family's land, property. Uh, we got about a thousand acres here. It goes around, bordered by the Tallapoosa River. Really a scenic area, and a lot of deer and turkey on it. Um, I grew up with bird dogs. My dad had them as a, when I was a kid, and uh, we wild bird hunted, uh, field trialed. I did a stand at several other hunting preserves around. Uh, worked six or eight years at several other places and got some commercial experience. Well, are you basically geared for, are you basically geared for day hunting or, or yeah, how, how you hunt. set up? I do half day and full day hunts, um, quail, chucker, pheasants, and um, just you know, call, make reservations and take, you know, it's just open to the public. Pretty easy to get to. It's just right off of I-20, folks, and uh, like I, I said, it's just halfway between Atlanta and Birmingham, really easy to come out here for a half a day or a whole day trip out here to hunt hunt quail and have a good time watch these birds. Keith, uh, you've got a, a barn up there that your, is your office. How long ago was that built? The barn is about 75 years old. My wife's granddaddy built it. He was a timber man, had a saw mill, and quite impressive barn. Uh, I don't know if you could find a lumber to build one like that these days if you could have, you know, had to, could afford to. Even if you could afford it, you couldn't find that kind of lumber. Yeah. It's just a uh, really unique well, barn. It's you've got it kind of set up to take a lunch break or, or yeah. kick back in the middle of a hunt or something. And we do lunches there. I fry a lot of quail and we grill steaks and make barbecue and all the fixings and gotten pretty proficient at that part of it. What here. size party does it take to come out here to, to have lunch provided with the hunt? Six people, I will, I'll provide lunch. Any Anything less than six, I'll just, uh, you know, it's just small charge to cover my expenses there. Uh, always glad to do lunches. That's a fun part of the day. It's enjoyable or memory for everyone. They seem to remember that as much as they do the bird dog. 52, 52 years? 52 years. <laughs> Fetch him here, Judge. He got he broke him. Good boy here. Whoop, whoop, here. Oh, yeah. left. What's up? He's all left at his bird. <laughs> <laughs> 
I sure have been. They all fly to the left. They're afraid of me. They're afraid of me. <laughs> That's it. Hey, Keith, they're afraid of me. Now, they must be. They know. think they get away from you. <laughs> <laughs> they made a mistake, didn't they? So far, they've got a fair chance of getting away, but only a fair chance. Well, let's go find some right-handed ones. Yeah, let's find some right-handed birds. <laughs> There you go, Mr. Rich. He's down. Tell you, tell your dog he's a dead bird. Pick him up. There he is. Dead he's got it. Good job, Mr. Rich. I thought he looked like that bird. Well, I tell you what. I missed the tree. 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 Oh, that was good. good he went right. Uh, I missed. I shot about that far from a tree just he went by. Bird probably got barked. You the hero. You the star. <laughs> he did a good. Red, job. I tell you what, you really tore him up today. It was it was good shooting. Deadly. It was awesome shooting. And Keith, we appreciate you having us down, folks. We're at Sweet Time Hunting Preserve, just outside of Atlanta, just outside of Birmingham. You need to come down here and enjoy some of this quail hunting with, with Keith. It, it's just unbelievable. You've seen the dogs work. They're great. Red, it's been great having you down. I want to come hunting with you again. Mark. Thank you very much. Man. And it was awesome. Thank you, Keith. You, 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 you got some fine dogs. Some of the best dogs I've ever hunted with. Thank you, sir. Very, I appreciate very, the compliment. Yes, sir. Mark, absolutely. Appreciate Thank having you, buddy. Sure. Hope to hear as much from you over the years as far from Mr. Farmer in the race Thank circuit. You. Folks, it's about to rain on us. We're going to have to get out of here. Just keep an eye on us for next week. We'll be back out here in the outdoors having you another good show. Thanks for tuning in this week. Thanks for tuning in to Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV this week. We'd like to thank the fine folks at Sweet Time Hunt and Preserve for having us down for a fantastic hunt with Red Farmer and Mark Brenner. Like always folks, be sure to tune in again next week for another exciting adventure in the great outdoors. We'll catch you somewhere next week in the great outdoors when we do it all again. <laughs>